Oh my goodness. Who is sneaking into your YouTube on a Friday evening? Ain't it a shame? Seem like I would be in bed somewhere or something. Y'all is crazy, but guess what? No, I'm right here. Why? Why am I here with y'all this evening? Because I've been doing DTF all week. And because I've been doing DTF all week, and I have hit a stride with this DTF process, I want to share it with you all again, the updated version, the knowledgeable version, the version that is out here making things happen. So I just wanted to go over this with you all. You know, I'm already sitting out here in the studio. I got everything right here all around me. I even have the camera set up, pointed at the DTF printer. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's take a look at this and see how it goes. So you guys, thank you for popping in with me. I'm not going to be on for a two-hour show, I don't think. (laughs) Y'all know how that goes. Um, And this is not your average show or average live that I normally do. I'm just doing this because um, there have been quite a few questions about DTF, how it works, uh, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And at this point in time in my DTF career, uh, let's see, April, May, June, July, three months in, and I feel pretty good. <laughs> I was worried about myself uh, after the first 30 days because, you know, I wasn't getting certain things and the software wasn't meshing, but I think we got a handle on it. And I actually wanted to give you a backdoor look into it step by step tonight. So, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. So, first of all, um, DTF is the hands down, in my opinion, best option for making T-shirts. It is the right now best option for making T-shirts. It's also the hottest option going right now. The DTF community is blowing slap up to Kingdom Come. So if you don't you, I don't. I can't even. I can't even force y'all to believe me because this is the thing. When I see trends and I see how trends are going and how things are happening, and I can, I can see it, and it's like, bruh, y'all need don't sleep on this if you can. If you can, don't sleep on it. If you can go DTF and you like doing t-shirts and you like, you know, working with graphics and stuff, girl, jump on this train. Because the train is a bullet train in the station, and it's full steam ahead for Profitableville, all right? And we'll get into that a lot more here shortly. Uh, But, yes, in my opinion, it is hands down the best option going on out there. You don't want to sleep on this. I promise you, you don't. Um, And if at all possible, you can get into it. I'm here to help you every step of the way as best as I possibly can, all right? So, real quick, I'm going to check in and see all the folks that have joined in. We got Miss Bobby Blues, Angela, Cyprian, Kingsbury Crafts, Designer with Danny. Hey, Designer with Danny. Mandy Smith, Miss Lila Nelson, Excitement T, the Sewing Brad. Hey, Sewing Brad. Yep, nope, not Sunday. Hey, Carolina Thread Place. Uh, Ethel Smith, Gail Moore, Kingsbury Crafts says, Hey, the Will, Mary Brown, Latanya York, Miss Parker. Catherine Carr and Lucy Lou. Sublimation, sublimation, Lucy Lou is great. I love sublimation. Don't get it twisted. I'm not kicking sublimation to the curb in the least little bit because I even have a box right here that we got sublimation supplies. And DTF does not work with the sublimation stuff. Okay, so these are two totally different, you know, beasts. Okay, sublimation. For me, when it comes to shirts, I'm trying to think of the best way to put it. Because sublimation is a beast of its own caliber. Um, You can take a blank white shirt and basically turn it into just about anything you want. That part of sublimation is phenomenal. The problem, now we're talking about shirts. We're not talking about all the other stuff that come with sublimation because you you almost can't touch that you know doing the mugs doing the tumblers 
doing the keychains, doing the flags, stuff like that. You almost can't touch it. Sublimation has that ace and spades, all boxed up, neat bow on top. Can't nobody touch it, right? But when it comes to T-shirts, when it comes to shirts, T-shirts, sweatshirts, um, hats, when it comes to shoes, you know what I'm saying? These are things that people want customized, but sublimation can't do it. Or they want it customized, and they want it customized on things that sublimation can't be done on, so to speak. So, for instance, yes, you can do easy subly. You can do easy subly, but this this here, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. We'll get into that part. But with sublimation, you're restricted to polyester, okay, or using a polyester spray or using a polyester uh, go-between barrier such as easy subly, vinyl, stuff like that, whereas with DTF, you don't have to worry about that. That's not even necessary. Let me give you a for instance. Um, so with, with sublimation, you're restricted, like I said, to polyester. Thank you, Lucy Lou. I appreciate the super chat. Now, normally I wouldn't bring out a bell on a non-Sunday, but we got to bring out the bell for that. We appreciate that bell. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate the, uh, super chat. Definitely always appreciate support of our channel. Um, and then, too, you know what else I'm also doing tonight? I'm going to throw this in real quick. This has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But y'all know how it is on Sunday and how my signal be tripping and stuff. I'm not even I'm not even Ethernet right now. I'm Wi-Fi, and we don't have any issues with the signal. So something going on on Sunday around here, and I'm going to find out what it is. But anyway, so that's the other reason I'm streaming today, just to te- give this a test. But, um... With sublimation, you can't do cotton, and technically, technically, by itself, without using an intermediary, you can't do cotton, and you can't do um, dark colors with your sublimation. So black shirts are a no, unless you have something like Easy Subly. And Easy Subly, in and of itself, is a phenomenal product. It is awesome, Okay. I'm not knocking Easy Subly in the least little bit. So if you were to do a, let's say if you were to do this image, Easy Subly, okay, you could do this image, Easy Subly. Now I'm going to turn it around to the back side, okay? So if you look at the back side of this, you can see where the light reflects off of the areas that are going to press to the shirt. So the matte areas, like right in here under the words and on this side right in here and in these little indentation areas in the cutout of the Jeep, those are not going to print. So you could reproduce this image very easily with Easy Subly because it's going to, uh, somewhere along your process, depending upon who you are and how you do it, you can either print on the Easy Subly, then do a kiss cut or cut it out, print and cut on a Cricut or a Silhouette, or you can cut the image, I mean, the shape out on your Silhouette and Cricut or, and then press the Easy Subly after it's already cut out. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it, but either way, you have to put it on the cutting machine and cut it out. This type of image is not very difficult. It has minimal um, areas where you would need to weed um, and the cut is pretty straightforward, not much to it, right? Okay, so let's move to, say, for instance, this image. All right, so this this is my Einstein, you know, the salt guy. You remember the salt guy that was, yeah. So this is Einstein, and he's dropping some, some knowledge salt on us, right? Some knowledge salt. So if you look at the back of this, all right, I'm going to try and twist it where you can see. Notice, you know, down here his his equations and stuff is separate from him. So you can do this with the Cricut or the uh, Silhouette and use this for um, cut, print and cut, but that's a lot of extra little teeny things that would have to cut and be weeded, right? But the rest of him is pretty solid. So, eh, yeah, yeah, you could do that. 
you could do that. That shouldn't be an issue, too much of an issue anyways. Let's see if we can find one a little bit more complicated. I may not have one right here, but we can pull one up on um, on our program, which we will hear in a little bit. But this guy has all of these stars and stuff around him. And all of these stars will press themselves. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to worry about lining those up with the easy subly and trying to press that onto the easy subly. So when it comes to minor details and a whole lot of little details, DTF is the way to go. It's, it's like perfect for uh, that type of transfer. Um, now, DTF is also direct to film is what I'm talking about, DTF. Direct to film also trumps the white toner process as well. Now, why do I say that? And I know there are going to be some folks who are, you know, hardcore white toner, and that's okay. Because as I've told y'all many times, if it works for you, that's perfect. That's a-okay with me. Do what you do and make your money your way. But I looked into white toner for myself, and what I found, number one, this setup was more affordable. Uh, the supplies for direct to film is more affordable, and the longevity of what I'm reading about in the forums and dealing with, and what I see for myself, is a better quality all around. Now, white uh, toner printers are different from your inkjet printers because the toner printers use a toner. So it's a type of like a laser application, so to speak. So it's a very thin layer of the ink that is laid on to the film. And then you marry the glue to the back of it, peel it apart, and there you have a transfer very, very similar to this, right? But it's a different type of ink. So it's based off of a toner system. Whereas with this process, direct to film, it is the actual pigmented ink, and it has a, a rubberish type texture to it. I don't know how to explain it, but there's a, a feel. It's thick, the ink is. And it lays the ink down on the film, which, of course, you apply the glue powder, uh, the powder to it, and then cure the powder. And there that results in, you know, the resulting transfer so the white, uh, there's white powder on the back of this one, and I have one that is a black powder, but I don't have it near me, I don't think. Yeah, I don't have a black powdered one near me to show you, but there's also a black powder available. Um, what I have found is with the DTF, because the ink itself is all, it, it's itself, when you press it, along with the adhesive, it's stretchable, okay? So, like, for instance, on my shirt, this is a very stretchy uh, shirt, and I'm stretching it, and you don't have any cracking, any peeling, none of that stuff with this. And this is one of those soft-type T-shirt materials that are not my favorite to normally work with, but with the DTF process, it's great. Absolutely love it. The shirt stretches, and it flows with it. Um, we wash them, we dry them, and no issues whatsoever. So DTF um, is, I'm doing DTF uh, live demo tonight. That's what we're going to do uh, tonight, Miss Lucy Lou, no worries. So this is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Dana. Day Rose 71, I just saw your message. Congratulations on your, I'd rather ring for you on Sunday. I'll ring for you twice now. How about it? <laughs> Congratulations on your baby. We doing DTF, so I didn't, you know, and because this was impromptu, I'd much rather ring the bell when all of the wonderful folks is there to help celebrate with us. Uh, but we'll celebrate a little early and then celebrate again on Sunday. Um, but the... DTF, we're going to do an example of it tonight so I can show you how it works, how I've enjoyed it, um, and just how really cool it is that you can print just about anything you want and have a really awesome looking shirt, right? 
So let's take a look. And what I'm going to do is switch you guys over. Well, let me move this first. And we'll switch you guys over to the um, Photoshop, actually. And I'm hoping I don't do too much with the computer because y'all know how it goes when you're running too many high processing applications. It can cause some drag on the video feed. So hopefully we won't have any issues with that this evening. But if we do, um, we'll deal with it accordingly. Actually, let's do something else as well. We're going to get a design first because I have designs but I want to um, show you the process when it comes to getting a design as well so let's switch that first and foremost and then we will switch to yeah boom okay so here is our website and I'm going to go to creativefabrica.com creativefabrica.com now I talked to you guys many times about Creative Fabrica. Creative Fabrica is the mecca, the holy grail of designs and stuff like that that you can get um, to use in sublimation, to use with vinyl, to use with embroidery. They have fonts, graphics, crafts, embroidery, classes, tools, the whole nine. They even have a fans page, which we have a fans page. Um, but now we are able to offer the special $1 all access pass um, here on our channel and the link is in the description below. So from now on, when you click, let's, um, let me see if I still have that link saved. No. Well, no, I have this information. So it will be $19 a month uh, off of the price of the regular uh, access if you click and use our link. Um, so definitely check them out, and you can cancel at any time. You can even try the $1 access and then just cancel. But I promise you, once you get into this, you'll be like, oh, my God, I have to get in, and I have to continue to look at all of the really cool things that they have. So what I just did was I clicked on illustrations, and I'm pretty sure that's where we want to go. Um, and... I hate enabling people with certain things, but I love enabling people with certain things. This is an enabling type of a situation, okay? So if you are able to access Creative Fabrica on your laptop, I'm sorry ahead of time. Your family will probably not like me anymore. Your dogs will be hungry. They'll want to go for a walk, and you'll be tied up scrolling and looking at stuff, your husband or your your partner will want dinner and you won't be able to cook it because you're you're still scrolling and it will annoy you when people bother you because you're you're trying to scroll and find designs that you want to keep in your collection. So I'm warning you ahead of time, it's obsessive. Okay? So when you come into Creative Fabrica, just start scrolling. And notice down here we have 9,777 pages of graphics and illustrations. And these are all high quality, which brings me to the other part of doing DTF. If you have high quality graphics, man sakes alive, there's no limit to what you can do, right? So I'm going to go to page two. I'm looking for something that I think would be a little difficult to do um, with the print and cut. But at the same time, it will, um, all of this will translate well over to the DTF. But um, we're trying to find something a little more intricate for our, um, for doing our, what's the face? Hold on. I'm trying to make sure I'm not missing comments. Let me squeeze this over. Hey, Stormy Rains. How are you? Hey, so do we begin embroidery? Hello, how are you? Hey, Andrea Ross and Tanya Yu and Pamela Bradley White and Laverne Miller. Hello to all of you all. So, ooh, this is neat. We have penguins. We have house plants. If you see something you like and would like to see 
Um, you're watching DTF. We're going to be doing a DTF project and showing how to print it out and be able to press it to a T-shirt. Uh, so if you guys see something that's pretty cool, like, for instance, look, look at these. Now, all of these intricate cuts that you would have to go through to put in for um, your easy subly unless you just left this solid white in the background, but you actually could uh, print it in your own, um, you could print it in your own DTF and put a different color and stuff like that. So if you see something that you like, give me a shout in the chat and we'll put something together. Like the turtle is cute, but oh, the princess cut would be cute. The princess is pretty. Um, let's see what we got. Hey, Shamira Customs, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, let's see. Uh, not the dad's best friend. Do we want to do best friend? I don't know that we want to do best friend. But as you see, you can scroll for days. Um, and be able to put something together. Family on the beach is super cute. Uh, look, already have pumpkin stuff out. Uh, tea party, baby stuff, planets. Kitty, you saw a kitty? I see puppies. It must have been on the other page. Hold on. Let me go back. Kitties would be a cute thing to do. Uh, let's go back to the cat. Uh, I see dogs. Let me go back up because that was probably back here. No, it must have been on page three. Hang on. I hear you will loud and clear. I see pugs, dinosaurs. There would be cats. Where did I see those cats? Um, let's see. Penguins. I must have been on page one then. Hi, hey, gorgeous Rose. How are you? Here's puppies. We don't want puppies. We like puppies, though. Don't get it twisted. I love this beach sunset. Hang on, Will. I'm going to touch that, too. Look, isn't that gorgeous? That is absolutely super cute. That would make a really nice t-shirt, too. Um, I see the bunny rabbit. I miss the cat, Lord. Here, we'll do it this way, Will. Let's type in cat. C A T S. Y'all. Okay. So, cute cartoon cats is cute. Um, ooh, that's a whole lot of cats. We might can do that, though. Oh, look at these cats. These cats are cute. 20 PNG illustrations of cats. I really like this cat in this space, suit. So if you have a license, I mean, not a license, but if you have, and that isn't cute, hilarious, my bad. Hey, Marge Campbell, if you have the uh, account at Creative Fabrica or if you go ahead and sign up for the $1 trial subscription, once you have your account and you find something super cute that you like, what do you need to do? Just come here and click download. And guess what? This whole thing of 20 PNG illustrations is now being downloaded to my computer so that we can use it and we can uh, make some really cute designs with all of these kitties, right? So let's go ahead and extract that. And then what we'll do next is go into Photoshop. And we're going to create a new design. I'm going to do 17 by 11 because that's the paper size that I'm working with on my DTF printer. So here is our 17 by 11. And what I'm going to do, now this is the process of what I go through to print out designs on my DTF printer, okay? So I'm going to go to File. And also what I'm going to do is, can you use the illustrations if you do not renew? If I'm remembering them correctly, it's a lifetime license. It is a lifetime license, but I would definitely read the fine print. Always read the fine print, especially after the last video I posted. 
always read the fine print. Um, let's place embedded is what I'm going to choose. That was out of the main menu. And I'm going to go to desktop, and my desktop is a hot food mess, but we're going to the cats. And here are all of our super cute kitties. Oh, my gosh. And I loved the astronaut kitty, so I'm going to select him first. And he's going to populate right here on my desktop. Now, if I were to leave this the way it is, okay, um, the largest size, I can print it 13 by 19, but you, with my print, excuse me, my printer set up, I can't do the full 13 by 19, okay? I have to leave a margin at the bottom more so than anywhere else. I can print from the tippity top and side to side, but at the bottom I have to leave about an inch and a half because of the way the paper feeds through. If I don't leave that inch and a half at the bottom, what will happen is as that paper finishes printing and it gets to that back end, it will come up and touch the back side of the printer um, and it will smear my ink. So I have to leave a little bit there. Uh, but that's with any size paper, doesn't matter which one, whether it's 8.5 uh, by 14. I don't think it's 8.5 by 11. I think it's 8.5 by 14 or the 11 by 17. Um, but with when you download images, from uh, photo from Creative Fabrica, I like to edit mine. Um, you don't absolutely have to, especially if it is a transparent background. When I say transparent background, like right now, you can see the white background of the 11 by 17 paper, but I can hide my background in the lower right hand corner of photos, uh, Photoshop. Just Click that, and now you see the grid behind it, and there's no more white background. So all of this area in here now will not print white. But if I leave the background and save it like that, then this will fill in a square around the cat, and that white will print, and that's not what I want. So I take my background off. And then with this cat, he's super cute, but he's a little big. Uh, he is 10 inches tall. 10.3 by 9.2 wide. That's way too big. Um, you could definitely put him on a shirt at that size, center chest, but I want him to be smaller. So this is something else you can do with DTF that I think is really super cool, and that is uh, you can put multiple images on the same sheet and print them all out, okay? It's called game sheet. So... I can set up a game sheet if I want to. Now here's the cat, and I fixed him where he's, there's nothing else around him, so I can, actually, you know what, let's do something different. I'm going to do something different. I apologize. I don't want to set up a game sheet, but if you don't have a DTF RIP software that will help you print game sheets, then yes, you will need to set up your own game sheets. So if I wanted to do that and I wanted to bring in another design, I just click on it and hit place and bring the other design in. Now this is another example of a image. You see how this wispy is all around him and his edges? We wouldn't have to worry about that with DTF, whereas the print and cut may have some issues cutting into his fur uh, without you needing to put a square around him. But you can just duplicate these and um, fill up your sheet and then send it, send it to your RIP software. But I don't have to do that. I don't know why I'm trying to send y'all through the hard way. So what we're going to do is open, and now I'm going to open the astronaut cat. And I want to make sure that he doesn't have um, this extra space is what I don't want, okay? So I'm going to crop this down, and I'm going to bring it down as close as I can to the graphics so that when I do send it over to my RIP software, I, if I want this cat to be exactly six inches wide, then I don't have to worry about taking into account all this extra space around him. I want him to be six inches wide, right? So... Let me go to export, and I'm going to do a quick export because I'm going to let him save as he is, astronaut cat, and I want, I don't, 
ever want to print him with that space, so I'm going to overwrite the original file. Okay, so there's one. Now let me open up a different cat. Let's see who's cute. Do you want the cat in the mouse on the beach or the fat cat with yarn? The cat with glasses is super cute. We're going to open him. I love the cat with glasses. Okay, so as you see, even with this one, he is adorbs, but his space around him is bigger. So I'm going to first crop this down so that it will be to his size and I don't have all that extra space. And that extra space also, you know, can cause issues when you're trying to do gang sheets as well. So that's the other reason why I like to take that extra extra space out. And now let's see if we can't make a change. This is something else that's pretty cool with Photoshop. If I can get it to work, I'm still kind of a newbie with this, but we're going to try. Let's see if it'll fill in his glasses. And it does. So you can change colors with Photoshop. So if I don't want them teal, I want them orange and green. I just fill in the blue spaces with the color orange that I chose. And what I did in order to do that, um, I just selected the paint bucket tool and when you pick the paint bucket tool and come over to your colors on this uh, swatch area I can pick the color that I want so if I want to fill things in red I just use the eyedropper and click on red and now my paint bucket will do red instead of the orange that I was doing before so that's the other reason I bring in designs and now what I'm going to do, I want to keep the original cat. So this time I'm going to export him as something different. So cat with glasses and I'm going to put remix because he's a different cat. Not the same file because I changed the color of his glasses even though I left a space right there but it's okay. Alright so we have that cat and we have his whiskers out here so that's going to be important to note in his ear hair. Uh, when it is time to print with DTF. So let's go to file and find us another kitty to work with. We have a fireman cat. We have the Hawaiian cat playing the ukulele. We have the pretty little girl. And then we have the princess cat. Eh, eh. Best friends hugging cats. Let's see what that looks like. Best friend hugging cat. Oh, they're super cute. We need to crop them as well. So I'm going to crop them. All right. And again, even with this particular design, if you don't like the color of their little ribbon, you can change that. All right. So I've cropped him. And now let's get our paint bucket. And that's pink. That's blue. I'm going to make his or this one's red even though it matches his little cheeks there, but it's all right. And then on that one, his is red, so let's go with black, a blackish color. And no, because then that takes away the detail, so we don't want to do that. Let's go with, he already has teal. Let's make him yellow. Not that shade of yellow, I want this shade of look. No, I think it's the same thing. There we go. So now we've changed him to yellow and red bows and so now we're going to export best friends hugging cats and i'm going to do remix just like i did with the other and we're going to save all right so i've done one nope not that one one two three different cat files that i've changed okay so we're done with the cat files now i'm going to open up um my rip software is what it's called RIP so I'm going to open up the RIP software and mine the one that I use is CAD link is Digital Factory 10 direct to film and here is my working area my queue so to speak and over here on the right hand side I already have my uh, layout set for 11 by 17 paper so I don't have to worry about changing that. So it's already set for that. Over here is where I bring in the images that I want to put on this 11 by 17 paper. 
So let's go and hit the plus sign up here in the upper right hand corner. And we'll go to desktop. And let's go to where is it? The cat. Here we go. And here is the hugging cats. We'll bring that in first. And now what I'm going to do is show you how I set up a gang sheet. Okay, so gang sheet, again, is where you take multiple images um, that are different and you can put more than one on one sheet. Kind of like stickers, you know what I'm saying? So here's our best friends hugging. Now the image came in much bigger than my 11 by 17. And so when I select the file with the cat's best friend hugging down here uh, in the lower right hand, I can see that it's 40 inches by 35, 34 inches. That is not what I want. So the tallest I want this design to be, let's drop this down to three inches. All right, so here's our best friend's cat hugging and it's three inches. But say for instance, you know, I want a shirt with the kitty cats on the chest just like I have right here. And I know that Will likes cats, so I want Will to have one too. So I would click on copies down here in uh, the job box. And now I have two. If I want more than two, I just grab this little yellow box and slide it over. And now I can print three. But it's going super close to the edge, so I'm not going to take it over that far. But I can drag it down, and now I have four. All right. So there's ways to um, there's ways to get your designs and split them up and multiply them so that you can have more than one. So here's the cat. Let's add something else. Uh, we wanted what was the other one? I don't see the other one. Astronaut cat, and it was something else that we fixed, and I put remix on it. Oh, cat with glasses. Okay. So here's the astronaut cat, and the astronaut cat came in at 38 inches. We don't want that. So we're going to drop the astronaut cat down to 4 inches. And if I scroll out on my mouse wheel, you can see I have one 17 by 11 page up here and a 17 by 11 page down here with the astronaut cat on it. But I want him up here so that I can maximize my 11 by 17 space. So I'm going to click on the cat down here, hold down control, and drag him up to the top. And as you see, whoop, as you see up here, he's too big for that space, so I'm just going to drop him below these guys. And now he's here. All right, and the same principle applies if I want to do more than one. I just hit copies, and it will duplicate him, and I can stretch it out to make more than one. All right, so let's add the next cat. We have the cat with glasses and open him up. And this cat came in at 39 inches as well, which is ridiculously big. But I'm going to make him two and a half inches so that I can gang sheet him beside these other cats. So let's hold down control and drag him up. And look, he fits perfectly in, perfectly in that space. So I want to maximize him and make more than one. So it drug him over, but that's not what I want. So I'm going to uh, change the rows versus the columns. And so now, whoop, wrong cat. Come on, bro. Now we can move him over. And I can print him here, and I can even drag it down, and I can fit three cats beside the other cats. Hi, bees. Lofacion? Donna Cooper? Hey, Donna Cooper. <laughs> all right, so I have all of these that are going to print on my 11 by 17 sheet. Now, I'm going to go into uh, my designs, and we're going to see if I can find one that has some crazy cutout type stuff with it. Um, like, for instance, this guy. Let's do this guy right here. So this is one of our uh, designs that we're doing uh, T-shirts for with our new label. And uh, 
this one, as you see, has a lot of lines showing the astronaut falling. So to cut him out and all of this little fine detail um, and put him on a shirt, even if you were to weed this, it would take forever. And I'll show you that in a little more detail. But to make matters worse, what we're going to do is we are actually going to shrink him down. So I'm going to take him down to, I'll say, three inches. Actually, I'm going to make him four inches because I, I like definitely getting the detail in him. All right. And so I'm going to hold control and drag him up to the first sheet so that he's up here with these guys. And then I'm going to make copies of him and pull him over. Let's see how far we can go. It's too much. And this, I should be able to print this without too much issue uh, with it messing up down here at the bottom. Now, what I personally also like to do is I like to make sure that I'm maximizing as much as possible. So even though I may not need um, Lucy Lou because it's coming in as the the actual size of the image when it was created. So that's like the default size of what the image actually has been created and saved as. So when you bring it in, it's going to come in as it. So if I were to save it at the right size, um, it should come in at the right size, if I'm remembering correctly. Now, I always resize everything, so um, I could be incorrect with that. But... I've had designs come in at their decent size. Hey, Gail McNair. So here I wanted to take up this space, even though I may not need all of these cats, but I don't want to waste the film either. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And who knows, somebody may want some cats one day with orange glasses on. So here is our game sheet. And as you see, um, uh-oh, I'm going to make that because it's going over into his design. You see how the whiskers are overlapping? So I'm going to get rid of these extra guys. But you see we have whiskers, little thin, wispy whiskers that we're going to be dealing with. We have uh, the astronauts. Um, now, it looks pixelated because the preview is a low-resolution preview so that it doesn't take up a lot of memory um, resolu uh, memory processing in the computer, but it doesn't print pixelated like this. Uh, but we have all of these lines and all of his little intricate details there that, you know, you would have to weed and cut out, stuff like that. And then you have our astronaut cat with his stars. And then we have our best friends, kitties. So we have all of this that's going to print out for us um, in our on our sheet, rather. So let's I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of him, too. So I'm just going to have some extra space. It'll be all right. So at this point, we actually have um, almost a full game sheet. So you can see how if you were to um, start doing DTF, and you may not make quite as many T-shirts, but... There are people out there who don't want to invest in the DTF set up the equipment or can't afford to invest in the DTF set up and equipment, but they want to do shirts or whatever. And they may say, hey, can you print these transfers for me? And that's another way you could make money on the side is printing transfers. But as you see, sometimes folks may want certain sizes that may not fit all on one game sheet or um, – Another issue is resolution. You really, 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 <clears throat> really want to have the highest resolution possible, at least 300 uh, DPI or um, is it DPI? I'm pretty sure it's DPI. You want to have 300 uh, DPI so that the resolution is just crisp, okay? Cool thing about this program, although it's pricey, this program has a feature built into it where you can go to um, super size image and it will actually take a pixelated image and clean it up for you. Uh, but 
the problem with that is that image will have to, you can't export the image after it's been cleaned up. They purposely left it where it would stay in the program because that technology is actually pretty darn good. So now that we have one, two, three, four different files, but several of them are uh, multiple, now we want to rip our software. Now, the rip software, let's go ahead and rip these and show you what the white ink looks like. So what I generally do is on the back side of every portion of my uh, designs, I put white ink on the back so that no matter what color shirt I put it on, it's going to pop with that color. And to show you what that looks like, we'll go and view raw data, okay? So here is what my printout should look like. The program I'm using is um, Digital Factory version 10, direct to film. The Digital Factory version 10. So here is all of our designs, but I want to see where the white ink only is going to print so I can view uh, the white and look, this is where all of our white ink is going to print. So, as you see here with Astronaut, only the details, look at his whiskers, only those details is what's going to print. It's not going to print, you know, the halo around them or anything like that. It's actually going to print just the image that you need uh, to press to the shirt. And that's what I absolutely love about DTF. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing printing. And now we have our, now it may act up on me. I hope not. Let's see if it's going to act up. <gasps> it behaved for me. Okay. So it's going to be a while before that spits out the printer because it's laying down. And I'll actually, you know what, let's see if we can't take a look. This is going to be one of those instances where, you might get drunk from me wobbling the camera around. But let's see if I can show you. Uh, I don't know if the light is on. Let, let that work. Let's see. I can't tell if you can see that or not because of the um because of the light. Let's see, did that work? Nope. But I don't know how well you can see that, but it's it's printing out the color first. And then it comes behind the color and it adds the white ink last so that it's covering the image. I don't know, I can't tell from up here because I'm away kind of from the monitor. I can see a little bit, but I can't see completely the same thing you can see. But it does the color first and then layers it with the white ink. So we'll give that some time to um, print out and again, that's pretty much my process in how I, uh, it is quiet. It, it sounds just like a regular inkjet printer. Um, the noise is barely there. The, um, if the glue is cured at a good temperature, not too high, you barely have any smell from the glue. Um, there are some fumes. Sometimes if, if my temperature is a little too high, it'll have like a smoke off of it. Um, so I have to be very careful making sure that the temperature I cure it at is sufficient. I have the convection oven um, and would have it set to cure um, at 285 degrees. And it's only in there roughly 60 seconds, sometimes less. 
uh, but you know that it's cured properly because it will have like a orange peel texture to it. It's shiny, but it's not super smooth. It's orange peel um, texture to it. I don't know if looking at the reflection of the light there, if you can, how well you can see that. But that way you know it's where it needs to be and that it will adhere to the shirt and turn out looking fantabulous. Um, but DTF makes it so much easier to get those super fine detailed um, designs pressed to shirts without having to worry about cutting out um, and weeding a lot of stuff. Like, for instance, this design, this is the back side. This is the front of one of our designs. But here's the back side. And you see all those little teeny stars. Um, you know, each individual one is there. You know, you're going to press them, and, and all of that detail is going to be there. Um uh, uh-oh, I done messed with my camera. Hopefully I didn't disconnect me too bad. I was trying to find the um, logo. Our logo has a lot of little thin lines in it, and it presses that absolutely beautifully. So DTF is a lot of fun. Uh, it is pricey. It is pricey to get started. Um, but, I mean, y'all, what in our line of business is not pricey? Really. About the... The easiest thing to get into that doesn't cost a super a whole heck of a lot would probably be, you know, the cricket and vinyl, um, which at this point just about everybody is doing some form of vinyl um, when they're doing T-shirts. Um, and then those who wish to venture further was doing sublimation, uh, which, again, the restriction is polyester and white shirts. So... To combat that, DTG is where you have a printer that the platen itself, like, let's switch you back over so I can explain that a little bit better. And as you see, the prints are coming off of the press as they're coming out. But with a direct-to-garment printer, I would put the shirt right here. And this actually moves out of the printer. So the shirt would, I would load the shirt on this and load the platen into the printer. And so the whole tray here would move back into the printer. And then this same print head, instead of printing on the film, it will print directly on the T-shirt. And as it prints on the T-shirt, just like it's moving the paper out, it would move the whole shirt on the tray out and print one image, not all of this, of course, but your chosen image on the shirt. Now, there are drawbacks to doing direct to garment. Um, you can use any, you know, you could use cotton, you can use polyester from what I understand, but the problem with direct to garment is you have to pre-treat the shirt with uh, a chemical, uh, wet the shirt, then dry the shirt so that the ink will actually adhere to the shirt. Whereas with this method, you don't have to do that. The printer is a lot less than a direct to garment printer because instead of you having to load a shirt, you're just loading film. So a regular printer can be converted, not every printer, but a, this is a six color printer, a six color printer. Certain ones can be converted to DTF and then allow it to print onto film instead of printing on the actual shirt. So that's where DTF has proven to trump the garment decorating industry, y'all. It's, it's crazy. It's really crazy. And when I tell you it's to the point where supplies are limited, you know, because so many people are getting into it, it's it's insane. And then here is our logo, um, one of the little itty bitty versions of our logo on the hem of a shirt. And as you see, there's the stars and there's the lines 
um, and and it all adheres beautifully as long as it's powdered properly and it's cured properly. It's gonna it's gonna press and it's going to result in your image uh, going onto the shirt. So, and as you saw tonight, we used Creative Fabrica, found some simple designs. Any of those designs we looked at could have worked. Um, and we cropped them, we edited them, brought them over into the RIP software and printed them out. So if you are looking to create um, some really cool designs, uh, fresh and new type designs, or even put together your own idea of design. So, for instance, um, did I close them out? I think I closed them out. Let's see. Let's bring them back down. Creative Fabrica. That's the other thing I absolutely love about Creative Fabrica. Hey, Jan White, how are you? Um, it's all one site, Will. You get all of it. You get every bit of that with the Creative Fabrica membership. You get the graphics, you get the fonts, you get the crafts, you get the embroidery. One membership and you get all of it. Um, fonts, I don't even want to go into the fonts. I swear I don't because the fonts by themselves will frustrate you because there are so many fonts that are so cute and just my darn computer is filled with fonts and it's frustrating because I'm like okay should I use that one or should I use that one or should I use this one oh man that one's cute too though and I just because I'm one of those ones I want to know what I'm needing to do and I'm gonna darn do it darn it <laughs> but when you have so many options oh my gosh it's overwhelming you guys well it is for me anyway so if we go to graphics again and we go back to illustrations, just to give you a good idea of what I mean, for instance, you know, right now is the Christmas in July sale with a lot of different places. I guess people are getting ideas together for what they're going to do um, as presents for folks. So you have, you know, you could do hats or shirts and make your own because this comes with the whole family, right? And you can separate each family member and make it what you want it to be. You know what I'm saying? So, the and look, they have hair options. They have, you know, hair options for the other. I mean, the, it's the possibilities of you doing something exactly the same as somebody else. You don't have to. That's one of the... so. When we were discussing uh, in the video, or I was mentioning in the video uh, that I did with copyright a couple of days ago, you know, one of the comments left in the video was like, see, there we can't do anything. There isn't anything out there to do. Uh, no, there's plenty out here to do. You Look, you could, a, a person who loves dogs, or they have specific dogs, look, you have all these dogs. They may have a beagle and, and a, a shep, not shep. What is this puppy dog? I know what he is because my son wants one. Uh, I'm drawing blank. Even still, this is a shepherd right here, shepherd pup. But a person could have two different types of pups who could make them their custom thing with the puppies on it and printed DTF. Pup mom, dog mom, um, mom of the best pups or mom to shep and trigger you know what i'm saying it's just it's crazy y'all the 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 sheer vast options that are available on this website is ridiculous it's ridiculous all for one price per month one one little bit matter of fact like i told you if you click our link then it's 19 a month from then on. <laughs> it's 19. Let me make sure I'm not lying to y'all because, yes, yeah, it renews $19 a month if you go through our link. Because otherwise it's more than, I think it's like 29 a month or something like that for everybody else. 
Husky. Thank you, Miss Pamela Bradley. Lord, Lord, Father, I'm trying to tell y'all I'm, I'm tired. I didn't, I was up all night, long last night, working on our website um, for our clothing line or our brand, and then went to went with my husband out of town this morning and came back about one. Got what four hours of sleep, and is just I'm tired. <laughs> So, but at any rate, y'all, Creative Fabrica is where it's at for designs and options. Every bit of this can be used in DTF, you know. Um, now, of course, Tumblr and stuff like that, digital paper, is mainly for sublimation, but you actually could create um, a, show you what I mean. You can do something like this. See how it's? That image is in the background, but they did the paint, you know, made it look like a strip of paint. You could do that with any one of those backgrounds if you know how to manipulate graphics in uh, Photoshop. So even the the backgrounds and stuff like that can be used to create your own. Look, look at how they put this together. You you can do your own thing, y'all. Don't don't think for one moment just because you can't do a copy written item that that's the end of the world, you can't do anything else, and that's the furthest thing from the truth. So our printer has just finished printing out everything. So I'm going to show you the powdering technique at this point, okay? So really quick, and I have to be super careful with this because this ink smudges easily because it's wet. This is wet right now. And generally what I would do is I would let it dry before I powder it. So I would let it sit either over here on the printer or I would put it in the powdering tub because I created uh, or I put my powdering set up. I use a tub and I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, I would let it sit in the tub until I'm ready to powder it, which give it time to dry. And the reason why I give it time is because if I powder it right now, it absorbs more powder. Not that that causes a problem for it adhering to the shirt or anything. It just uses more resources. It uses more powder than I, I want to use. But it's no big deal. We're going to do what we need to do so that you guys can see the entire process so coming over here to our um powdering tub so here is my tub and as you see it's just a simple sterilite tub and as you see that's the powder that's in it all right so i just shake my powder down to the corner and then i take my that's the printed side that's going to go on the shirt so I lay it in upside down with the ink side up. And I already have some powder in here, so I have a little measuring cup that I get and scoop. You know, there's no specific amount of powder that I have to use. And then, of course, if I don't have enough powder in here, I have a container, pour container with some powder in it. And I just pour the powder right on top of that uh, transfer, okay? So I'm going to adjust our camera real quick so that we can see the powder process a little bit better. All right. All right, yep, that's right. And here I get, grab it and try to make sure I don't touch it anywhere where the ink is. And this is pretty much what I do, is I just slide it back and forth like a seesaw, make sure that that powder touches every bit of that ink on this sheet. Now, generally, because this is a powder, 
I try sometimes to wear a mask while I'm working with it because it's powder. Um, not that it's been said anything about a toxic repercussion or anything like that, but who wants to take that chance? Not me. So after I powder it a couple of times, back and forth, I tap it to shake off the excess. And so here is my now powdered transfer. Okay. So at this point, I would just put it in the convection oven and let it basically melt the powder, cure the powder, but it's melting the powder so that at that point, all I have to do is cut it apart into each individual section and then when I'm ready, press it to the shirt. And when you press it to the shirt, um, we press at, I want to say, 310 degrees for about 15 seconds. And that's that. You know, peel it off, and then I give it a second press just to make sure. Same temperature, 310, for about, you know, 10 seconds just to be sure 15 to 10 to 15 seconds just to be sure and that's it voila that's dtf um so i'm going to grab this and switch the camera let's put it back to the printer actually so i'm going to do a video a little bit later and i need it on the printer so that is DTF. All right. So it's pretty cool. Um, pretty easy to do. Your RIP software is here. As I mentioned, I'm using Digital Factory 10. Um, once you, once it finishes printing, it drops down here into the reserve bin. And if I want to print it again, all I have to do is drag it back up to the top, and then I can print it again. So if I get an order for, you know, I don't know, 50 shirts or whatever, I can just print it over and over and over again and, you know, send out the transfers or press 50 shirts, whichever the case may be. And that's that. Um, oh, and when you cure it, like I said, you put it in the oven 285 degrees for... 60 seconds and that's it so that is how you do DTF if you have any questions about DTF then definitely give me a holler and we'll try and answer any more questions you may have now now that I have pretty much gotten the handle for the most part, on DTF and getting it working and have the colors. There was one point, and I mentioned this on last Sunday, I think. Um, at one point, we were discussing sending out transfers of McQuackens, and one of the negatives to the DTF I'm going to address now um, so that it can be understood by me and everyone else. So I ended up not being able to do the printout. Uh, be mindful of your holding being saves a raw file on your PC that can eat up your hard drive space. Um, thank you, Will. I did read that in the thing, but I'm so worried that I wouldn't have been able to pull the file. Well, I I think I saved save them in profiles or something. I'm going to have to read into that a little bit more, but my in the back of my mind because I'm a closet hoarder type person, I have a hoarding personality where I feel like I'm going to need to use something later on so I don't want to get rid of it. So I'm leaving stuff in that bin because I'm like I know I'm going to have to print this again. And I don't want to have to figure out the settings and sizes and blah, 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 blah. So I'm having to learn how to save all of this stuff and be able to get right back to it and not mess with my measurements. Because I did have an instance where a customer came back and she ordered more shirts. 
and I had print out extras of the transfers. So I was like, I ain't worried about it. I got extras. Yikes. I ran out of the front uh, thing that goes on her shirt. I had plenty of the, the thing that goes on the back. But the image that went on the front, I ran out of, and I forgot what size I had the original image. So I had to take the transfer that I had, measure it, and try and get it. And I did get it really darn close, if not spot on, um, of the size so that I could print more. But that was a hassle. So that's why it's like, eh. Um, Bertha May has close to 100 designs already say, I, and you just you just don't want to have to figure that thing out again. So that's a personal problem. I'm working on that. God ain't through with me yet. So, um, but as far as the the downside is you have to, and I, I said this in my uh, first review video that I did of DTF, and I said you have to print every day, all right? That has not changed, and I'm going to tell you why it hasn't changed, which leads me into sending out the printouts of Sir McClackens to people. You know, I'm one of those types of people who, you know, you recommend that I need to print every day. You tell me I need to print it every day, but sometimes, you know, a person has to fall into the hole to understand that the hole is actually there. So... I heard that and I knew I needed to print every day. I was aware of that. But when you don't feel your best or when you're comfortable in the bed um, and you don't want to get up and go in the studio today because I'm taking the day off and I don't even want to be bothered with it, and you decide, you know what, I'm not going to go in the studio and print anything, and I don't know what I'm going to print anyway. Or you took off and didn't want to print anything, then the next day you end up having to run errands all over and don't get to come back and print. Or, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, I've gone some days and not printed with the printer, and I got a clog. And I didn't get just one clog. I've, I've gotten multiple clogs because apparently in dealing with this, a hard head made a soft behind but the behind was even softer and was softer again because I didn't learn my lesson the first two, three times. Well, it came down to last week where, or was it earlier this week? I think it was earlier this week where I had a clog that was so bad that the white wasn't printing at all. And nothing, none of the techniques and the stuff that I've been doing or been told to do was working. And so I was, you know, fit to be tied because I thought that I had destroyed my DTF printer. And everywhere that I was reading in the forums, DTF forums, DTF printer forums, uh, forums for that printer, was pretty much indicating to me that I've destroyed the print head or the part that goes back and forth and sprays the ink onto the film. That's the print head, and a new print head runs about $300, and I was afraid that I was going to have to buy a new print head. Well, the powers that be had things manipulated in my life long before this problem ever came about, and I didn't realize it. So, uh, long story short, there is a way to ultrasonically clean the print head and my daughter just so happened to have an ultrasonic cleaner um, that she bought last year. We we really don't know why she bought it because, I mean, we know why she bought it to clean her jewelry, but we don't wear jewelry like that. So why did you feel the need to buy it? Anyway, powers that be was looking out for, for God takes care of fools and babies. He was looking out for this fool. And so I was able to clean the print head and bust open that claw, thank the Lord, because I just knew I was so upset, y'all. It's crazy. So now that I clean out that claw, you best believe a heifer comes in here and she prints every day. Two, three things I print out to make sure that I keep my white ink flowing at all times. I, I keep my print head clean. Um, I check and shake my inks. I mean, I do whatever I need to do to make sure that I don't clog that thing ever again. So it can be clogged, 
But if you listen to the instructions and do what you now, some people are like, you need to wet cap and blah, 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 blah. And that's true. You can wet cap, which basically means which, and see, this is the other thing. People tell you, yeah, you can do this. You can wet cap, blah, 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 blah. But they don't tell you, how do you wet cap? How the heck do you do that? What does that even mean? Explain it in detail so that I can understand. But anyway, I finally put two and two together. Wet cap, the print head goes back and forth on any um, inkjet printer, right? So as that cartridge swings back and forth, it's shooting ink onto the paper. Well, when it goes back to its original spot and it parks, because it's done printing, that's the uh, station, your your print caps of the print head station. So down in the bottom of that print head station, there's a sponge down under there. So what happens is when that print head comes back over, it comes to rest on that sponge, and that sponge is supposed to help keep the print head moist with ink. Uh, so keep that moisture on that print head so that you don't get clogged because the ink uh, helps keep it from clogging, all right? So what these folks have said, okay, I tell you what, if you get some uh, liquid, and I'm, if I'm not mistaken, they say distilled water, but I ain't even paid that no attention because I don't want to do this method, but they say if you put the liquid in there on that sponge and fill it up to where it's filled with liquid, when it parks back over the top, you can leave your printer and not touch it for days because that liquid is sealing and definitely keeping that print head wet, and you don't have to worry about the ink drying out. Whereas with the sponge, it's like, you know, it's a sponge. So there's, like, a not flat surface. The sponge has a textured surface, so air can get up in there, and it can still clog your head if you leave it sitting for longer uh, than you need to, especially the white ink. Your colors, I ain't had a color clog yet, <laughs> um, even after letting that printer sit for three days. But the white ink has a lot of pigment in it, and so it clogs so super easy. It's crazy. That's the only downside. That's the only downside so far to that printer. The only thing that posed a challenge to me, and that posed a challenge because of my negligence, not because of anybody else. So now that I've printed every day, I come in here every day, I check it. If I print and it seems like the white is just a little bit weak, I do a head cleaning, which the printer does by itself. It does have its own built-in head cleaning, but if you get a clog bad enough, a head cleaning won't work. Um, but as long as you're printing every day, you won't get that clog. So I do a quick head cleaning. Everything's great. I print out two, three, four things, and then go on about the rest of my day or evening or whatever. But that allows me, uh, since now we're doing our uh, brand, it allows me to print out extra things for our brand, and then I can just set it off to the side so it's not a waste that I'm printing stuff. So I try to print things that I know will be helpful to us. So at any rate, that's DTF. That's DTF. The only thing I didn't show is curing the... Uh, powder, but that's because I did not turn the oven on, and I didn't want to knock any power out on anything while I'm sitting in here and streaming and whatnot. So that's the only reason. Why. <laughs> the only reason why I didn't. But like I said, you, I mean, it's really not too much to see anyway. You turn the oven on once it hits 285, and you put it in there 60 seconds, pull it out, and it looks just like this. After cutting it apart, of course, but it. It looks just like this. Yeah. That's the back and that's the front. And you press it onto your shirt and that's that. Experience is the best teacher. I'm going to learn from your experience. Please do, Miss Pamela Bradley White, because I'm going to tell you what. I would much rather you hear my fails and my failings or my shortcomings or my challenges and you're like, you know what, I saw the pain in her face. I don't want to go through that and do things properly and save yourself that stress and aggravation, which is the whole reason I come on here and talk about this kind of stuff. So, um, oh, my gosh, it is 1040. I told y'all I wasn't going to be on here for two hours and where am I at an hour and 40 minutes later? Still running my mouth. So at any rate, this is all I wanted to show you guys was the DTF. I wanted to do sublimation today, uh, but as I mentioned, 
I was out of town with my husband this morning till this afternoon and came back and crashed because I was up all night. And um, I just I just didn't have it in me to do sublimation today. So we're going to just sublimate all the things on Sunday. That's what we're going to do, Lord willing. And I'm still here. So thank you all for, for hanging out with me this evening. Um, if you are interested in BTS, I do have a link in the description below of a guy in Florida who is who gave me or not gave me who I purchased my BTS set up from with all of my supplies. Um, and he ships really quickly. So uh, definitely check out his link in the description below, Kingdom DTF. Um, there might, there should be an announcement coming down the pipes here shortly in regards to DTF if you're interested in getting into DTF. He also has a couple of different options of equipment. He has um, commercial equipment and he has the, you know, home set up like what I have right there. So different price level options he has available. So check that out. And again, with Creative Fabrica, they offer to the Baby's Booty viewers, if you sign up for the trial subscription for a dollar, your access becomes nice uh, after that. It's it's not going to be what everybody else pays. That just goes straight to them directly. Um, because, of, you know, I asked if we could have a really good deal for you guys. It's so many of y'all. And uh, it helps you guys out because I'm trying to say well I'm saying it helps you out but like I said when your family is fussing at you because you're scrolling through designs and fonts and stuff all day I warned you so please don't hold that against me but I'm just trying to tell y'all it's obsessive if you let it be so I have to ban myself to only when I'm doing stuff to scroll through creative fabrica so, at any rate, I appreciate y'all hanging out with me this evening. I'm looking forward to seeing y'all on Sunday. So, hopefully this DTF stream will help uh, someone else out there and um, look into doing DTF. And I am somewhat considering printing transfers. I'm nervous about it because sometimes people don't follow directions very well, and I don't want folks mad because they sent a design over that's not a good resolution and you know or they don't I'm worried about it Will you know how that is I'm worried about it <laughs> I'm worried about it so um, I don't know I gotta figure that part out but we'll see I've, I've considered it and still considering it and still haven't made a 100% decision so alright you guys it's time for me to eat dinner and go back to bed because I'm tired, and I look forward to seeing y'all on Sunday. <laughs> so y'all behave. Have a good night. Talk to y'all later. Bye.